Welcome to the GLM. My name is Fiona. I'm the Log Cluster Coordinator and Preparedness Coordinator for South Sudan. I've got two of my team here today, Carolina, who's one of my logs officers, and Deco, who's one of my operations coordinators. I'm not going to talk in detail about the current conflict, but to say that we we're at a point after a number of years where no significant progress overall stands out. While all this is happening and taking into account the years of failed peace deals, the greater population slips further and further down in their access to basic human rights and needs. Complicating increased needs is decreasing funding. Generally across the doing more with less has never been more relevant. Over to you, Deco. Thank you, Fiona. Briefly, we have the national cluster based in Juba with six subnational hubs in key strategic points located around the country, most headed by senior nationals. Depending on the hub, we provide storage and transportation by various means, that's water or river transport, road and air. The subnational clusters provide operational coordination and information management at service at the field level, and together we are all linked and talk off the same page. Remember, outside these major hubs, there are also other smaller operational hubs throughout South Sudan. Here, we do not have on-ground presence. We provide services required for instance, storage, while we provide the ready issues with infrastructure and transport without follow-up obligations. Over to you. Protracted crises. We see it worldwide with protracted crises facing funding issues for multiple reasons, especially in 2021. The amalgamation of internal changes in some of our largest donors, plus Brexit, plus COVID, on top of the lack of political willingness from the government of South Sudan, here it is a perfect storm. Now, more than ever, we need to be on top of our game. Explore opportunities for cost reductions and reduce waste in every aspect of the supply chain. And I include the management of processes under this. This has been a South Sudan long cluster priority for years. Every year we work closely with WP and follow their lead on new routes, reducing air as much as possible. So what does affect the cluster in South Sudan? Surprisingly, it's not the ever-changing conflict, the soft issues of few decrees. We can work around this. It is largely organisations requesting our services. Deco will expand on this as she and my ops team deal with this daily, every day, with little improvement over the years on these issues. So I do hope you get my point. Over to you, Deco. Thank you. Uh, first and foremost, over 80% of our repair smooth items are incorrect. Still, basic logistics practices are poor in counting, weighing, volume measurements, an issue meaning we must cross-check everything, then adjust the request, while the organization do not seem to care and carry on and submit another incorrect one. Secondly, handovers are non-existent largely or improperly done. In order for smooth continuity of logistics operations, there's need for the logistics cluster partners to manage the retainment of essential knowledge. A lack of simple management practices costs a lot of money. Moving on, uh, not accessing the relevant forums for vital information updates. There's a lot of information available that is designed to assist in planning processes. However, we continue to receive queries that have been clearly shown on the South Sudan website, mailing lists and email. Gaps between deep and national offices based in Juba. Logistics cluster teams have spent time reviewing new delivery options in deep field, discussing with organizations. Some have pleaded with us to tell their offices to keep them informed of the update. The above issues become challenges, especially in forward logistics. For a short drive, roads being cut off for most parts of the region. Thanks, Dee. These are daily, time-consuming on 
our side was organisation and not basic Follow clear procedures. And while those teams work in silos, it is also not understanding that your priority is not national priority. These issues are basic in rescue of the organisation. We have helped with trainings, holding multiple briefings, but isn't it a lot of plus to roll to teach new national staff how to play a box and measure the volume? Clearly it's not. But we have trained over a thousand national staff due, due to basic frustrations that no one else does. The way forward, while I fully support the advent of new technologies to update the supply chain, you're all forgetting the basics, as we have clearly pointed out. So moving on. Recently, due to contextual changes, there has been a small amount of funding and acceptance of organisations out there to upgrade basic WFP has undertaken focused upgrades on key roads, expanding the use of rivers through smaller channels, and initiated dike repairs to mitigate against the devastating flooding the every year in Zhongle. This has allowed us, and hence our partners, to access more locations alternate cheaper modes of transport. In the underfunded HRP, overall savings are critical. Going back a few years to the previous GILM, there was a discussion whether it's a dis 